It's 1980-something, I'm 13 years old, and I've just started a new school. It's a selective school, which means you had to pass an exam to get in. The kids in this school are very bright, and a lot of them were very good sports people. I was neither, and I found it very difficult to make friends there to begin with. Within a week, someone attacked me on the shoulder. It turned out to be a lab tech, and he invited me uh, one lunchtime to go play uh, a board game with a bunch of other kids. This was kind of weird for a whole variety of reasons, but also because I didn't really know much about board games outside of Monopoly and Snakes and Ladders, and I thought we were probably a little too old to play Snakes and Ladders. But anyway, desperate to make friends, I go along. Turns out it was Talisman, uh, edition one, and it was amazing. It captured my interests of fantasy and kind of questing all in a board game. I absolutely loved the 40, 45 minutes or so we played. We didn't get anywhere near completing the game, but I was obviously so enthused that the guy who, who invited me suggested that I attend their board game and role play club that took place after school hours the following week. So the following week, I turn up to the library. Um, there are about five or six people there. Thankfully, all of them in my year group, just people I hadn't met yet. There was one guy at the head of the table, Mike, and he turned out to be our DM and GM, in fact, for the next five or six years, five years actually, how long I was at school for. Anyway, we sat down and I was kind of surprised because there was no board there. There were character sheets that were handed out and I got to play something. I can't remember what, I think it was a mage. But anyway, what followed over the next two hours was truly life-changing for me. It was my first experience of a role-playing game. I was playing whatever character was. Like I said, I think it was a mage. And the story that the DM told completely captured my imagination. He explained how we were, we were, we were entering rooms and, and, and sort of fighting monsters. And we used die six to do a whole bunch of actions and battles. Basically, it was the board game, but without any limitations. I was, I was free to do whatever I wanted. From that point on, for the next five years, I was gonna play some form of role-playing game every single day. And that's a lot of role-playing. The actual game we were playing was called Tunnels and Trolls. For me, it was a forerunner to D&D, which eventually became our main staple. Tunnels and Trolls was a very simple um, uh, set of rules. In fact, it only used die six as I remember, and I've probably got a lot of this wrong, but I, I remember that you would pick up items like armor and weapons, and all that would do would, would, would be to add die rolls, die sixes, to your eventual combat. Combat was super simple. You had a bunch of die that you rolled, and the DM had a bunch of die that he rolled. Whoever got the highest won the combat. It was super, super simple, very quick to learn and understand but it was a great introduction. I even remember that the, the booklet Tunnels and Trolls came in was, was stapled down the middle. Anyway, Tunnels and Trolls was my gateway in effect. Like I said, over the next five years, I played so many different role-playing games. I played Paranoia, Judge Dredd, the role-playing game, Conan, the role-playing game, Warhammer had a brilliant role-playing game that I, I really enjoyed. Call of Cthulhu was one of my favorites. Traveler, Space Opera, Star Trek, Star Wars. The list could be endless. Back in those days, there were just so many different choices to choose from, and I literally played as many as I could. Now, as well as discovering all these new games, the way, as you can guess, my mind worked was I looked at each one and realized there were elements that I really enjoyed of each of these games. There were elements of mechanics that I really liked, and there were elements of mechanics that I thought I could improve upon. Obviously, I made my own versions of these role-playing games, one of which I was very proud of. It was called Sands vs. Rabia. The mechanics were terrible, but the idea was fun. <laughs> anyway, years go by five years of playing role-playing games, day in, day out, and then university happens. My friends dissipate and disappear, and I discover alcohol and my future wife. The whole idea of tabletop role-playing kind of disappears. Many, many years later, um, about a couple of years ago, in fact, 
I decided I'm going to rekindle that love of role playing and rediscover what it's like, what it's transformed into. And so I join a club of D&Ders and I play Dungeons and Dragons again. Now, I thought I'd make this video to kind of give you a feeling not only of what I intend to do next, and that explains why I'm doing this on this channel, but also just to give you a reflection of what I've noticed between what I used to play as Dungeons and Dragons and what I now play as Dungeons and Dragons. So let's break this down into three basic differences. Let's start with the players. When it comes to the players, when I started role playing, everyone was my age group. Everyone was a boy because I went to an all boys school uh, and we were all very on the non-sporting side of the spectrum of people. Compare that with now. Now, the average age of who I play with is between 30 and 40 years old. I think I'm still the oldest at 50 odd, but everyone else around me is 30 to 40 years old, in my groups at the least. Whereas I used to only have boys in the hobby, now you have women. In fact, you have people of all genders, all races, all creeds, all colors, all actively involved in a very inclusive hobby, which is awesome. And thirdly, the kinds of people playing have changed. Now we have a, an even more diverse group of people, people who are genuinely interested in sports and aren't just necessarily the bookish nerds of the community. You have a whole range of people playing D&D, and that's just awesome. Why is it awesome? Well, because it adds to a more richer, more richer, a richer experience when you actually play. And that's the second change I've noticed. The kinds of scenarios we play have definitely improved. Although they hold a soft um, spot in my heart, dungeon crawls were very much the order of the day back when I was playing D&D for the first time. Now the scenarios or campaigns are much more involved, they're interwoven, and there's subtlety and intrigue built into them. You get to role play a lot more than perhaps you did back in the day, at least for the games I'm experiencing. And thirdly, there are changes in the rules. Now this is, again, is broken up into two bits. There are things that have been added to the rules that I think have enriched the lore and the world of D&D to the point that it's clearly the best I think, role-playing game out there in terms of richness of environment. Even going from basic to advanced, we added classes, we've added races, we've added new spells and skills. There's a ton more of stuff that makes the world a more exciting place to explore and characters more rich to explore with. But the fundamental rules, the infrastructure of rules that govern how you interact or how you resolve actions hasn't changed. D&D still uses a die 20 to hit in combat, and combat is pretty, in my view, lifeless and dull. Ultimately, you roll, you hit, you do some damage, you do again and again the same thing. The consequences of what you do, what you use to do those things, isn't really felt. The way we as players have evolved hasn't really been matched by the rule set in D&D. &D. To my view, anyway. Now, I know that one D&D is looking to resolve and, and change a number of things, but I'm not going to wait for that. Instead, I'm going to create my own fantasy role-playing game based on some particular specific ideas I have around how I want a role-playing game to work. I'm going to share all of that, as always, on this channel, and I'm going to do it in bits and pieces. So hang in there for it. What I will say, though, is that a lot of it's already been thought of. I've had multiples of years to think through my rule set. And so a lot of what I'm bringing to the table has been churned around in my brain for a long, long time. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a fit for everyone. But this is my journey about building my role playing game. So I'm going to share what I can and totally take on board feedback that you give me, but it might not marry up to what you're thinking. Look, I hope you enjoy the experience that I'm going to hopefully share with you, and I hope that you take something away from it, maybe to add to your own role-playing world. Maybe it will inspire you to create one of your, of your own. Regardless, whatever I do, I'm going to do it on this channel. And I thought I'd share this little intro as a way of explaining why I'm going to do that. For now, folks, I'm going to sign off. 
Have a fantastic week and I'll see you soon. Take care.